living are Siamese twins. They grow and go along together. With each new adventure in learning, living takes on more stature. It is like that at school, when our vision grows greater with fresh sights and sounds and tumbling new ideas. And so it is every time the horizons push back to let us see more of the world. Sometimes our learning grows with a rush and a burst of speed, breathless, with excitement. Those are memorable days. Days to share with the family. All the books here, Eddie? Yep. This time I'm going to get one about wheat. I'm going to ask for another like Little Chicken and Happy and Snow. The day when the library van comes down the road from Yarrow and Totem to Huntington is a day for living. It is a far cry from the days when books were chained to tables and only the rich could read to this, the day of the mobilized front line of learning. Rural Canada is library poor. Only 5% of the country population have any kind of library service. Five million people do without. The Fraser Valley Union Library is one demonstration of meeting the local need, and it works. The Fraser Valley is a compact district in the southwest corner of British Columbia. From the coastal mountain pass for 75 miles, it is a succession of small, neat towns and fertile countryside stretching alongside the broad river's final sweep to the sea. An economic unit, its forests and farms produce lumber and a rich variety of foods that pour down the valley to New Westminster, Vancouver, and the western seaboard. In 1930, when the people of the valley warmed to the idea of building up the Fraser Valley Union Library, they were pioneering. Regional library organization was new in Canada. This was the first experiment of its kind on the continent. Could one library system serve the needs of so many different people scattered over such a wide area? From the beginning, it took a lot of getting together of city, village, and municipal councils with school boards, and other local organizations encouraged to help. All along the Fraser Valley, 21 communities were in cooperation. This spirit had worked in other pioneer ventures. It worked again with books. Today, the Central Library Building at Abbotsford is headquarters for the library van, and it is the largest unit of the system. Here, people of a small family town have a library as adequately stocked and up-to-date as many larger cities. And here, too, both grown-ups and children discover it is easier to find what they like to read when someone interested helps. Organizing the system has taken time. There was the original job of piling up a large stock of books in the central library. Enough books and sufficiently varied to get everyone interested from the very beginning. It meant calling upon existing libraries and associations, public spirited individuals, and the provincial government for active support. It meant studying and promoting library legislation, planning and administering library taxation, and choosing experts, trained librarians, to build up an effective staff. The Central Library is popular in Abbotsford itself, but keeping up with the reading interest of the local public is only part of its work. Librarians at headquarters select and order books for all parts of the regional library system, and the same staff handles the exchanges from all points where the library van stops, filling requests for special books that come in from branches, schools, and deposit stations, as well as from individuals at the crossroads. 
special requests for books not ordinarily stocked in quantity can be filled, usually on the next visit of the van, if a request slip is sent in to the central library or nearest branch. Books for 40,000 town and country people. Books for people scattered over a thousand square miles. A ton of books in boxes for branches and deposit stations and on shelves for the roadside stops. A ton of books takes a heavy truck, sound tires, and average good roads. It takes more than just a driver to help the librarian to greet and know personally thousands of subscribers, to keep on schedule, and to see that the van is properly serviced after each 750 mile circuit of the valley. He is a man who loves people and books, who keeps the van running and the library serving. There are six branch libraries and four sub-branches. Their shelves are stocked with a semi-permanent supply of books from the central library, and substantial block exchanges freshen the stock at least twice a year. All of them keep up a good supply of magazines and periodicals to suit their subscribers. And regularly, too, the van comes through bringing books specially requested. For a practical person, books are tools. For the student, they are information. For the dreamer, they are inspiration and travel. And for the sociable, they are good company and a subject for talk with friends. Books for music, books for art, books for specialized study, books for the things that interest us most. Marie wants to read more about Anne of Green Gables, but young Frank is concentrating all his reading these days on learning about the merchant marine. For this young farmer born, the furrows that beckon are between the salt waves carrying Canada's seaborne commerce. And Mr. Secretary gathers up his selection of volumes for the next meeting of the Reading Club. There are 70 schools receiving regional library service in the Fraser Valley. At some schools, the van is the only library, and the children choose their books once every three weeks from the shelves. Books for school projects and study, books for adventure and reading, books for learning and living. Some other schools have their own library of books serving the pupils in the local district. Three times a year, a stock of some 200 or so books chosen for suitable diversified reading is loaned and exchanged from the central supply of the Fraser Valley Union Library. So the pupils always have a fresh supply of books to hobnob with and to get to know. like good talk can start a lot of new interests, and each pupil browsing in the school library discovers that some books are to be tasted, others to be swallowed, and some few to be chewed and digested. At 17 deposit stations, books are left for the community in stores, in filling stations, or in private homes, wherever there is someone interested to serve as volunteer librarian in a place easily reached by all in the district. To the branches at Cloverdale, Haney, Mission, and Chilliwack, the sub-branches at White Rock, Coquitlam, Hammond, and Hope, and the deposit stations and crossroad stops at Popcom, Ocean Park, Bob's Corner, and Sheam View, Straton, Glen Valley, White House, and Green Timbers, Harrison Mills, Crescent Beach, Sumas Prairie, and Pitt Meadows, Seeds, Starrett, Ansels, and Whaley's, 
and dozens of other places where we meet the Stevens and Coopers and Dell Gleeches and Harrises and old Mr. Donovan and those newcomers, the Waterstons, come all the valley people who exchange neighborly chat, waiting for the library van at a certain time on a certain day, come rain or shine, every three weeks the year round, all along the route from Abbotsford around to Abbotsford again. All of Canada needs library service and trained librarians. In established library courses like those at the University of Toronto and at McGill University, students learn not only how books are catalogued and stacked on shelves, but how to choose and get the best books to meet rural Canada's needs, and how to make the best use of the books when they have been chosen, bought, and catalogued. Villages and towns that build up small collections of their own usually find their funds inadequate and their collections soon become dog-eared and out of date. It has been found that the best working unit has a population of at least 40,000 and an annual budget of not less than $25,000. Essential to good library service are a good basic collection with a wide range of reading on all subjects, a constant supply of new books, trained librarians to select books, advise readers, and manage library affairs. And of course, a population of taxpayers who appreciate the value of library service and the need for its adequate support. Regional libraries like the Fraser Valley Union Library, where resources are pooled and services maintained out of taxes, are one of the most useful forms of rural library service yet developed. A regional library system serves all of Prince Edward Island. Other regional systems have been established in the Okanagan Valley and on Vancouver Island in British Columbia. Books may sit on library shelves, brimful of knowledge, but gathering dust. Or books may travel down a country road to the hearts and minds of the people. They may pause only to nod a greeting or to chat for half an hour. Or they may stay for a long, comfortable visit. For books, are like people. They can be good friends, and you get to know them quicker when they come halfway to meet you.